guys, welcome along to the channel, part 14 of this um, this Titanic Butcher session. Um, I've done a couple of videos in between 13 and 14, so things have sort of stepped forward a bit and I have, I have given some sneak previews of, of what's going on. But here we can see that basically all the cutting, all the reshaping is now done. Um, I have actually put another video, I completely reshaped the stern. So you can see now, when you look in here, you can see now the, the shape of the stern is now completely different than you get in the kit. It's much slimmer, coming down to a far finer edge on there. Um, remember in part 13 I talked about I cut the hull open and I showed you that I put some gaps in there and it's now filled with plastic strip and sprue goo. You can see I've just put some bits of sprue goo on there. They're just drying just to fill any tiny gaps. This hull is completely plastic. You can see there we've got sprue goo on the inside as well to weld all that in nice and solid. We've got our nice tumble home on here now, which we uh, which we wanted. So this, the, the, the hull isn't sort of just like a, a block of ice cream anymore, or ice cream tub, should I say, and a tip of the cloth there. And, um, and on the bow, you can see again, we've got this all coming back now. If you look at your hull, um, you will see that basically it is sort of from here to right back here it is just dead straight um, almost like a piece of guttering and it's not correct the titanic hull appears to be only straight for an area about this size here so you can see how it blends in you can see how it's all blending in here and then it's straight and then as soon as, soon as you get to here it starts to blend into the into the, the bow then so um really really happy with how it's come out um, I'll show you the I'll turn it around and show you the bow so you can see the shape of that and the the massive difference there is from the kit you can see now we've got this straight line here at the water line rather than it all con being concave um, and also the area here that's all bulged out that needs to be sanded out and blended in as you can see there but when you look at the hull the right way up um, I think I'll change the camera angle. Right, so now I'm going for the handheld, so sorry about any shake or anything. I can show you now around the, the hull, and you can see on there the bow is looking lovely. I need to do some work with this um, this horse here on the stem. I'm not quite sure what to do with it yet. If anybody can help, then any advice would be gratefully uh, accepted. So you can look down the hole there and we can see that it's it's all down here. You can see how it's all blending out into a radius there. And you can see it's, it's just, it goes on forever, that radius. On the actual kit, I think it stops about here and it comes out to this huge shoulder and then curves in. Maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea. If there's anybody watching this who's sort of local to Gloucester um, and has the kit with an unmodified hull, maybe I could come to you and or meet you somewhere and photograph the, the two holes next to each other. I've got a van, a clean van, so we could put them in there if it's raining or whatever and photograph them. So if you if you want to do that, then uh, let me know. Um, so there you go. Let me come along the sides there and you can see we've got the... It, it's, it's it's hardly noticeable, but you can it's there. You know, you've got this tumble home going up there. And then as we come in the hole forward, you can see the massive change in the um, in the stern and now where the lights above it you can see this this line where's my hand here this line up here and if you look at the real Titanic that's what you see is this that line that curve coming all the way down and all the way down to here look and uh, and that's what's giving you that effect and then coming around the around the back there you can see the difference here get the light a bit better there we go now you can see the, the difference there. And when you look at the amount of these, all these white lines, they're either cuts or bends. Basically all the vertical lines are cuts and uh, most of the horizontal lines are bends. But um, you can see all the cuts I've done in there. Hours and hours and hours of work. <laughs> so, and if you wonder if you don't know what all these slots are for, these are cutouts in the hull so that when I put the scale the Titanic photo edge on from Alexander, then I don't see the, um, the plastic behind the portholes that's what that's for so yeah and you can see that the, the, the stern has definitely had the most amount of work on it and uh, you put it up on its side you can see the the difference there you can see how thin 
this area here is compared to your kit it's just um, incredible and I've also this area here if there's one thing you do thin this area here out because on the kit this comes down to a huge bulge and comes over the top whereas that's how it should be the the, the shaft should sort of feather into the hull rather than the other way around and you can see here if you look down the length move that along. there we go And coming round the other shot of the bow, you can see there just how much difference the shape is to the kit. All right, so there we go, back to our normal view, and uh, there we are. So happy with how that's come out. If you are going to have a go at this, this is your main thing. Make sure you've got these two, your two weld decks in there and clamped in place. Um, that's what these bits of sprue are for. They're rubber bands on here and they're holding the holding the hull tightly onto those weld decks. The other thing, no stress. Remember, no stress. I've had a lot of people uh, asking me questions about, um, you know, heating it up and pushing it around and all this, that and the other. The problem with doing that is if you say you heated this area here and you squashed it in because it's so far out, you would affect this area here. You, you're not going to move this area here with heat without affecting that. No way. So, you know, there's there's a lot of plastic removed from here. You can see I've got a bag here, and these are chunks of plastic that have been removed from this stern area where I've brought it all in together. Oh, and the other thing I was going to show you, if you look at this, if you remember, if you go back to, I think it was part one when I first started discussing doing this, and I think we looked at the, um, I think we looked at the bow. And I talked about how on earth I was going to get this this um, hull plating to come all the way around and sort of, you know, I only had five strips to go and I had this huge area to fill. And when you looked at it here, it was sort of next to nothing. And we looked at it here, it was massive uh, because it was just because it came out so far and then down. It was a much wider surface area, if you like, to try and fill. Well, if we look at this now, if I take this strip Okay, and I put it up against the edge of there now, and I bring it around to the side, put it against the bottom of that plate there. All right, so it's got that length. If I do that now, if I put that there, look at that. We've actually, it's even less now, whereas before it was more than it was here, now it's less. So getting these this hole plating to come along and actually blend into the bow, and then the same on the stern, it's going to be the same to blend into the stern here to come around this you know rather than have to sort of spread it all out because there's such a huge area I've got to fill so um I'm sort of ready now to start doing that after after I've sanded down these um these bits of sprue goo here so I'm sort of ready to start on the hole plating now I think what I might do is give it a light coat of some crappy old paint that I've got lying around just as a guide coat and give it a rough sanding with a block just to make sure I haven't got any wavy bits on it. But um, we'll see how we go and uh, I'll come back and let you know how I've got on. Here we go, coat of paint on there now. Um, <clears> That's <throat> just some uh, Mr. Hobby Olive Drab, which I've got loads of. And I've mixed it with water, which I've never done before. And it's gone on really, really nice. So, uh, so I'll have to try in the future. Um, so basically, yeah, we can see all one colour now. And now we can get a much better idea of the whole lines, I think, of how she looks. There we go. I've decided I'm going to remove all of the plating I've already put on. Because as you can see, it's got a lot of damage on it. Lots of scratches and scores in it. And there's all bits of sprue goo stuck to it. And also, when I've glued this floor in, I have managed to get a slight out of flat in it. I've got a... It sort of goes down here, up here, and then down there. So... Yeah, well done, nice. It's very, very slight, but it just means the bottom isn't flat. And I want to display this model, if I ever finish it, I want to display it on one of those bases with the, you know, the, like the, the blocks underneath it. So I want it to be dead flat on the bottom. So um, I'm now going to have to sand all this flat. It's not, it's not very much. It's probably half a mil if that. Um, I'm going to have to sand all this flat now and then I'll start again. I'm not 100% convinced that I got this centre plate, this A plate, dead straight anyway. So uh, we'll start again, I think, because all this, the edges are all damaged and there's there's bits of glue damage on it and stuff. You know, it's never going to be perfect because 
it probably wasn't perfect on the real thing, but uh, I think I'm going to do a better job second time round. So um, I'm going to get that sanded off and then we'll see what it looks like. Voila, there we are, gone. <laughs> so uh, you can see the, the uh, sprue attachment points now again. So um, sanded it out, as you can see, it's not actually dead flat, whether that's from the moulding or from me putting the floor back in, I don't know. But uh, it's not enough to worry about. Uh, basically, I wanted to get rid of this lump in the middle here. So we've now got it sitting down and it's kind of... It's, yeah, it's practically there, so I'm not going to worry too much about it anymore. Right, so you saw me talking about these great big sanders in my little chat I had, which would be probably a few days ago now, but this is actually yesterday. Um, so yeah, the, uh, the this thing's great because you can, you can with, with this, you can stroke over, the, if I bring the camera further away, you can see that I can, I can go over the bottom of the hole with this thing, and because it's so big, it just makes it nice and flat. And then you've got the next one down, which is this one here. Um, yeah, like I say, going in with little bits of emery like this and trying to rub out this, forget it. So, um, and then the whole reason for doing the guide coat, I'll just show you on here and then I'll call it a day for this video. We can see in this area here, let's bring you back down. You can see in this area here, I've started sanding and we've got an area of paint left here, which means that is a low spot. This is a high spot. So we can just come along with the, with the sanding block and without sort of staying in one area and not putting any pressure I can just sand this away until I've got what we call a witness it's an engineering term is leave a witness and um, if you were skimming a piece of metal flat say this was a rough casting you would paint it with blue engineers blue or whatever um, or it would just have a, a black finish to it because it's cast and then you would machine it flat and if, they, if the instruction were to leave a witness you would actually leave a witness in the low spots and that's what we're doing there, leaving a witness so I can see where I was low and where I was high um, if you keep sanding endlessly away so you end up with nothing left and it's all just grey plastic you're back to square one and you've got to put another guide coat on so um, I'm just going to sand this to leave a witness and we can see in this area here it's nice, um, maybe a low spot there. But, uh, yeah, because it's going to be plated, you see, it doesn't need to be perfect. Um, you know, if you've got a very slight low spot there, like that is, that is literally nothing. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be done. But if this was like Missouri or, uh, or you know, something with a steel welded hull, you'd want to make sure it's all pretty good. Unless, of course, you're doing what Ben did, which I would like to do, and that is um, giving it a uh, canned effect. So here, you've got to make sure we stay away from these strakes. Just go over here with this one. And of course, the alternative, if you haven't got these great big blocks, you can use these Infini sanding sticks and get the same effect. Just go over it and see if you've got any low spots or high spots. And there we go, as you can see it's some... Um... I haven't done too bad a job, it looks like it's coming out alright. Bit of a low spot there, either there. Now that probably means that this sprue goo here is a bit high. So I'm going to come back with my coarser block and just sand that away. Again, leaving a witness so I can see the green paint either side. See we've got a low spot in there or we've got a high spot there and there so I'll just keep sanding it looks like we've got a high spot here to be honest there we go that, there is a low spot there I can feel it so that's going to want a bit more sprue goo in it let's get my pen There's going to be a few of these. 
so there shouldn't be any higher low spots here because I haven't done any work in this area. Okay, so now we get down to the stern. Do the same again. I'm looking for low and high spots. There we are. That's all looking great. So I'm going to go on and get the rest of this done. And um, I'll see you for part 15. And in part 15 we'll talk about the whole plating. And maybe uh, I'll do some, you know, show you how I do it sort of thing. Okay, so I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Happy modeling. Bye for now.